today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. Yo, why is Joe Rogan throwing Elon Musk under the bus? Election interference? Yo, Diddy's sons are gonna come for Ray J again. He keeps talking about Diddy and these freak offs. Somebody tell Harvey Weinstein he's never getting out of jail and he should just stop trying. What up? It's Chen Out Loud and I'm back with another episode. All right, it's Thursday morning, my second favorite day of the week. Friday is one day away. We are close to the weekend, y'all. All All right, I got a great show set up for you guys. I have four lead stories. Ray J has admitted to TMZ that Diddy and other celebrities are paying people that were at the freak-offs. Joe Rogan suggests election interference from Elon Musk. President Joe Biden and Donald Trump meet at the White House, and Michael Strahan addresses backlash he is facing over the national anthem. In quick news, we're going to talk Drake, Don Lemon, Harvey Weinstein, Tony Hitchcliffe, and Spirit Airlines. We're going to close out the show, as we always do, with question of the day and a little bit of sports news. Y'all know what time it is. Turn your TVs, your radio, or your devices up. I'm about to start this show. Let's go. Ray J alleges that celebrities are paying victims to keep quiet about their involvement in Diddy's freak off. Claims people have called him personally. And he says, I don't know why I just said that, but hey, they're going to be mad at me. F it. Um, Y'all know Ray J is not shy to get on these microphones and spill the beans. Yesterday, we had a story about actually a pastor that was coming after him. I don't know why he keeps staying and talking about people's business, but that is Ray J. Uh, Ray J is spilling the tea. In a clip from TMZ's new documentary, The Downfall of Diddy Inside the Freak Off, Ray J is alleging that some Hollywood stars are paying victims to keep quiet about their involvement in Diddy's Freak Offs. Ray J says, somebody has the truth, somebody pays you to keep quiet, and hopefully that money that you got paid secures your happiness while you watch the lie continue to succeed. He describes the situation as celebs saying, I'll give you money, please don't talk. Ray J went on to say that some celebs have personally called him to vent about their experiences with Diddy. He claims they call him because they look at him as a vessel of information to come out, but they don't want him to expose the tea. All right, I have a little clip of Ray J. You could hear him in his own words. Take a listen. Hearing about artists paying victims to keep their name out of it. They want to talk to me about what happened to them. They want to tell me about certain things that happened with them and Diddy. Ray, I want to make sure I understand this. Are these high-profile people calling you because they've had some affiliation with Diddy that they don't want to come out and they think you might be the vessel for it coming out? Is that what you're saying? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. All right, so we told you guys about this documentary yesterday. There is a singer-songwriter that is talking about freak-offs and about little people being at uh, Diddy Freak-Offs. If you guys want to watch episode 374, you could check that out. Now, today's promotional advertisement for this documentary, they're leaking this this video of Ray J and what he was saying um, in the interview. I haven't yet watched the documentary but I think of any any outlet out there, TMZ is doing the best job documenting this Diddy freak off and Diddy indictments. I, if I'm not mistaken, this is their third. Um, I'm definitely going to watch this over the weekend. But um, what I am looking forward to and I keep saying to you guys is somebody's going to break. Somebody at some point is not going to accept the, the, the money and want to see one of these celebrities get put behind bars or at least be exposed. It's a matter of time. Ray J hints at it through this interview. Um, and like he says there where, hey, hopefully the money keeps you quiet enough and happy enough to see this lie continue. Somebody somewhere is going to not be happy enough with the money and they're going to want to stop the lie. Cassie was the one to do it to Diddy. I don't know who the next one is going to do it, uh, who will be the next one to do it. If it will be LeBron James, if it will be Beyonce, if it will be Jay-Z, those are the three names that have literally been bubbling at the top. Everybody knows that Jay and Beyonce were super close friends, and Jaguar Wright um, has been trying to expose Jay-Z. So 
If anybody has seen this documentary, please comment below or send me um, an email, trendoutloud at tfqr600.com. Let me know about it, but I'm definitely going to try to catch it on the weekend because this seems like there's some juicy details. All right, Joe Rogan might be in some hot water. Our second lead story, Joe Rogan says Dana White told him Elon Musk developed an app that allowed him to know the election results before it was called. Okay, whoa, this is big. Um, while reflecting on his experience during election night, Joe Rogan shared that Dana White told him that Elon Musk developed an app that allowed him to know the results of the election four hours before they were called. Joe said, I don't know where he's pulling his data from, but he had like the most accurate data in terms of rural states that haven't been called yet. All right, I have a little clip, but this is really starting to, to bring up a lot of questions. Listen, if places like Fox and CNN and these major news networks don't have access to this and they are plugged in directly, how is Elon Musk so plugged in? I know he's the richest man in the world. I get it. But this is something that money should not be able to give you access to. So anyways, let's listen to the clip of Joe Rogan. Take a listen. Elon created an app and he knew who won four hours before the results. I'm telling you guys right now, this is going to be huge. The Democrats are going to want to look into this. Um, I don't know if they could use this like in court or whatever, but the Democrats for sure are not going to let this slide. Like I said, those things are supposed to be private ballots and those things are supposed to be fed to major news outlets. Nobody else is supposed to be having access to this. You know, we do have a story, I think, coming up next, actually, or maybe it's in quick news about um, Donald Trump putting Elon Musk in the in his government administration. So then there's that question that's going to that's going to arise. So a lot of funny stuff going on here and I don't know if Joe Rogan should have said that, but we will follow up more with this um as more news comes out. Like I said, I predict that we're going to hear a lot more about this. Our third lead story, President Joe Biden and President elect Donald Trump meet at the White House. On Wednesday, President-elect Donald Trump met with President Joe Biden at the White House as part of their transitional process following the recent presidential election. CBS News notes that this process was not extended to Biden in 2020 as he begun his transition. This is the first time the two were face-to-face -face since their debate back in June. It was noted that Melania Trump will not be meeting with First Lady Jill Biden, although the First Ladies traditionally have their own meeting as well. Melania met with former First Lady Michelle Obama back in 2016 during their transition process. Um, I think I have a little clip of this. Uh, take a listen. President elect, congratulations. Welcome Thank, you. Back. Thank you very much. And politics is tough, not a very nice world. All right, that audio wasn't perfect, so I'll read to you exactly what went down. Mr. President elect Donald, congratulations. Looking forward to having a smooth transition and make sure that you are accommodated and welcome. Donald Trump answered and said, Politics is tough. In many cases, it's not a nice world, but it is a nice world today. A transition that's so smooth, it will be as smooth as it can get. All right, so really interested to hear what you guys think. Please sound off in the comment section below or send me emails. There's a lot of people discussing this online saying that uh, Joe Biden should not have a let Donald Trump, uh, should not let Donald Trump in the White House for this smooth transition only because he didn't do that to him back in 2020. As we all know, back in 2020, Donald Trump didn't do that because he felt like he didn't even lose the election. So he's like, hey, why am I going to let him in here? They stole the election from me, blah, blah, blah. Everybody knows what happened after that with January 6th, et cetera, right? So what, um, like I said, yeah, what, what do you guys think about it? The other thing too is the fact of the things that Donald Trump said about Kamala Harris and Joe Biden during this presidential election was so insulting and demeaning and just low. Um, it's kind of hard to see somebody, you know, in your face and welcome them and shake their hands. Here's another way of looking at it. All right. And, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I know people are going to sound off below and say that I sound like a, a, a Trump supporter. Um, and 
Before I make any political comments, I always say, I am not red, I'm not blue, this is a purple podcast and not even a political podcast. Whenever th- something goes viral, we talk about it here, the Turn Out Loud podcast, that's what we do. But I want to just put this in your head for a second. What if Donald Trump is like a boxer, where if you see a boxing match before to hype up the fight, they are literally insulting, going at each other's neck, doing this, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, I want, I can't wait to get him in the ring. I'm going to devour you, etc. You see it right now going on with Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. The fight happens. As soon as the fight is over and whoever is victorious, they go to each other's corner, hug it out, and are like, oh, my gosh, I love you. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. I say all of that to say maybe that's how Trump is. Like, hey, you know what? I'm going to say whatever I have to say during the presidential election. But when the election is over, hey, we're all friends. We could all hug, hug it out, whatever, blah, blah, and get back to, you know, running the country. Do you think, so my question is to you is that, do you think he actually means these things that he said to Joe Biden during the election? Or was that just Donald Trump's way of winning votes, getting people not to vote for him, getting people not to vote for the Democratic Party? Clearly it worked because they have the House, well, they, they're, projected to have the house they have the senate and of course they have the white house so is this almost like a boxing match is this is this hype or do you think donald trump actually really means this these things i actually think that those words that he said was almost donald's way of kind of apologizing where he said politics is tough in many cases it's not a nice world but today it is a nice world today I don't know, man. Is that Donald Trump's way of apologizing? Sound off below. Go easy on me, all right? I just try to look at things from a different perspective. Let me know. Send me emails. Trend out loud at cfqr600.com. All right. In our fourth lead story, Michael Strahan is addressing the backlash after he has been accused of trying to make a statement by not putting his hand over his chest during the national anthem. Some folks took to social media to call out Michael Strahan for not putting his hand over his chest during the national anthem while at a Veterans Day event. Michael Strahan made it clear that he is not making a statement and that he is a military brat and loves the military. Michael Strahan issued an apology to those who may be offended by his actions. All right, this really started on Sunday or Monday. I really didn't think it was going to make a People are going to make such a big deal out of it. But here we are a couple of days later and people are still talking about it. So much so that Strahan had to come out and apologize. I have a little clip. Take a listen. Everybody is Michael here. And I want to address what happened this past weekend. We had our national anthem. I didn't have my hand over my chest. Everyone thought he's protesting. He's making a statement. I have nothing to protest. And if that offended any of our military, I apologize to you. I'm going to put up the picture And you could see that Michael Strahan is behind the four guys that are, um, that he is with the, the, the guy, the Fox news anchors. And I find it a little bit hard to believe, although I do really like Michael Strahan. I think he's a good dude. I just find it a little hard to believe that you can't see the four guys in front of you. Their hands are clearly on their chest and your hand is down here. Like I said, I'm not saying I don't believe him. And I'm not saying that he was trying to make a statement. It's just that I think that he's just not necessarily telling the truth. I think he just didn't find it important to put his hand over his chest. And that is not a statement to him. It's just that he just wasn't putting his hand over his chest. And I don't think he realized how disrespectful that would be to people. I have stood for the national anthem and I haven't always put my hand over my chest. I didn't know that you had to do that. I thought you just had to stand. I didn't know that that was a prerequisite. I just think that he's not comfortable enough to come out and say, hey, I didn't know that. And I think maybe that's where the backlash is coming from. But at the end of the day, I don't think he was trying to make a statement. I I believe that part. Anyways, you guys sound off below. Uh, Let me know if you think he should have known that. And, And just also, did you know that you must put your hand over your chest to honor the military or to honor, you know, the country? During a national anthem, sound off below or send me emails, trend out loud at cfqr600.com. All right, this brings us to quick news. Ring my bell. Big Drizzy Drake. Drake was named the fourth greatest pop star of the 21st generation by Billboard. 
Shout out to all my Canadians and my boy Drizzy. I feel like I've talked about Drake literally like every day this week. I don't know why, but hey, he's popping up. Um, all right. So Billboard is putting this, this list out. I, the first time I've actually really heard about it. It looks to me like they're just dropping the, uh, the, the people who are in these positions. And what I'm assuming is that we're probably going to get the number one probably towards the end of the year. That's my assumption. I don't really know. Um, Adele is number 10. Ariana Grande is nine. Justin Bieber is eight. Kanye West is seven. Britney Spears is six. Lady Gaga is five. And Drake is number four. Respect to everybody on the list and respect to Gaga. I love her, but I don't feel like Gaga should be over Britney Spears and, and she should not be beside Drake. That's just my opinion. Everything else, it does make sense to me. But yeah, I just, I just don't agree with the Lady Gaga. Let me know if you guys agree with the top 10 list. And more importantly, who do you think is going to show up in the first, second, and third spot? All right, our second quick story. Donald Trump is reportedly expected to stop the potential TikTok ban. Donald Trump is reportedly expected to stop the TikTok ban in the United States. This move could be a significant shift from his previous stance on the app during his first administration when his America first position led to conflicts with China. Trump has promised to save TikTok during his campaign. And according to the people familiar with his views, he intends to follow through on his promise. Whew. TikTok is supposed to be banned 2025, but... I never thought it was actually really going to be banned. TikTok has 180 million followers or users in the U.S. That's too much money to let go. You know that Trump now wants to, you know, talk about things with China and Putin and Russia and all of this stuff. So I think that Trump is probably going to try to do this to kind of help out China with this end of their you know, they're back and forth and say, Hey, I'm, I'll give you this. You give me something. That's, that's what it sounds like to me is happening. And of course you guys know, I'm always going to, you know, ride for my content creators, whether it be TikTok, Instagram, YouTube podcast platform. So I hope this happens. We did talk about last week, how Canada is allowing TikTok to still be used, but they're not allowing TikTok to have any offices in Canada anymore. My whole thing is that if you can't have offices here, then why should we still be allowed to use it? It seems weird to me, but yeah, whatever. What can we do, right? Our third quick story, Don Lemon announces he's leaving Elon Musk platform Twitter. He said it is not a place for honest debate. Don Lemon has joined a growing list of stars and public figures who have decided to leave X, formerly known as Twitter. The television journalist made his announcement Wednesday morning, prompted by news regarding the social media platform's new term and services. The former CNN host says, I love connecting with all of you on X, but it's time for me to leave the platform. I once believed it was a space for honest debate and discussion, transparency, and free speech, but now I feel it will not serve that purpose. Don went on further to explain that in addition, starting this Friday, November the 15th, X is implementing a new service term agreement that he does not agree with. So I've been hearing a lot of this happening. There's somebody else that made a statement about this, that they're leaving Twitter because of this uh, new terms and service agreement. I don't think it's actually really going to stop people. Twitter is so big and Elon Musk has already come out and said, I don't care what you think. I don't care if you advertise. That is my platform. I own it. I buy it, bought it. I'm the richest man in the world and I don't care. So I think Don Lemon getting off of Twitter is actually just going to hurt him. He's a YouTuber and podcaster and he's trying to build up his own platform. And a lot of that platform and content exists on Twitter. So I think this is just a bad move for Don Lemon. But hey, we'll see what happens. Our fourth quick story. Harvey Weinstein sues New York City for denying medical release. Harvey Weinstein is reportedly filing a lawsuit against the city of New York following a recent cancer diagnosis, alleging medical neglect for refusal to allow outside treatment. The producer is currently being held at Rikers Island as he awaits retrial for additional crimes. All right, uh, the article goes on to just explain that his diagnosis, he wants to be treated at a hospital. They're not letting him out to be treated at that hospital. If you guys remember, Harvey Weinstein was one of the guys who kind of kicked off this female movement back in 2016. He was the Diddy before Diddy. And uh, 
this is almost like what Diddy's doing all with these bail hearings. He's just trying to get out of jail, trying to say, you know, hey, I have a medical attention. I have cancer. Put me in a, a medical facility and not in jail. It's not going to work. Harvey Weinstein is never going to see the light of day. But hey, he's rich and he's, his lawyers are going to keep trying <laughs> everything they can. But Harvey, you're never getting out. Sorry, bro. Our fifth quick story, Donald Trump appoints Elon Musk to lead a Department of Government Efficiency. It's official after all the campaigning and jumping around on stage for Donald Trump. Elon Musk has secured a position in President-elect's second administration as he is appointed the lead of Department of Government Efficiency. All right, we put this in here, not because this is breaking news, because I'm sure most of you have heard this a million times already, but we put this in here because we want to know what you guys think. We have so many Kamala Harris supporters, Donald Trump supporters. I uh, had to know what you guys think about this. Please send me emails, comments below. Well, what do you guys think of this? I mean, government efficiency, yes, yes, Elon Musk, whatever you think of him, you can't take away that this man has built some of the greatest companies the world has ever seen. SpaceX, Tesla, and a couple of other things, even PayPal. Um, but just because you can run a company doesn't mean you know how to run a government. And I think he might run into problems running and cutting the fat in the government the way how he does it like a business. All right. So like I said, my two cents, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below or send me emails. Our sixth quick story, Tony Hinchcliffe says, I apologize to absolutely nobody after his remarks about Puerto Rico during Trump's presidential rally. All right, I have a clip of Tony. Take a listen. I just want to say that I love Puerto Ricans. They're very smart people. I apologize to absolutely nobody. Not to the Puerto Ricans, not to the whites. Tony also tweeted this. These people have no sense of humor. Wild that a vice presidential candidate could take the time out of his busy schedule to analyze a joke taken out of context to make it seem racist. I love Puerto Rico and I also vacation there. I made fun of everybody. Watch the entire set. I'm a comedian, Tim. You might want to change your tampon. That tweet sounds like it may have happened a couple of weeks ago. I think that tweet was maybe like when this whole incident took place. Um, I don't know why people are surprised. Did you think that he was going to come out on, 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 and apologize? He is one of Trump's homies. You know, Trump never apologizes for nothing. I don't know why this is news of him not apologizing now. Just give me a break. Our seventh quick story, Spirit Airlines planning to file bankruptcy as merger talks with Frontier Airlines falls through. All right, we talked about Spirit every day this week. You know, America's favorite airline. Uh, they were there was a flight of theirs that was grounded in Haiti. We talked about that yesterday, and now news comes out that they are filing bankruptcy. There was supposed to be a merger, and it's not happening. For all my Americans who are uh, listening to this podcast. Let me know what you think. Does this really affect you as Spirit goes out? I know uh, a couple of my cousins and friends out there. Spirit is a great airline. It's cheap. It's quick. But it's a little bit ghetto. So are we really going to miss this? Or are you happy to just continuing flying on Delta and American Airlines? Let me know what you all think. All right. This brings us to question of the day. If you could ban one person off of social media forever, who would it be? All right, Sonia24 says the dancing muscle guy. All right, I think she might be talking about Terry Crews. Copa the Juice says Krishan Rock and the baby. What? Oh, I don't think she, he means the baby. He means the baby, like Krishan Rock's baby. We all know that Krishan Rock and Blueface are super toxic, but you cannot ban them offline because online would just be boring. I, I need them back online. They actually give me a lot of content. Somebody said DJ Academics. I knew that was going to happen. Um, somebody said the first lady, Elon Musk and the president, Mia 82 said Donald Trump. Of course, somebody said right after, um, Kamala Harris, then of course, Joe Biden. Um, somebody said the call is coming from inside the white house, DJ Vlad, Krishan, uh, Ronald McDonald Trump. What? Okay. Uh, Vlad. Wow. Vlad's getting a lot of hate. 50 cent. Another person said sexy red. Elon Musk. I thought there'd be a lot more Elon Musk, actually. Somebody said Tyrese. Yo, why do you want Tyrese offline? Because he's always crying. 
Ray J, yo, we got to keep Ray J online. Ray J is amazing for content. Academics, Sexy Red, Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown has actually been kind of quiet recently. Trump, Vlad, The Shade Room, Candace Owens. Oh, yes, Candace Owens. She's been quiet a little bit lately. Although I heard she just put out some like weird tweet other, the other day about Israel. Anyways, um, somebody said, anyone from the, from the Zeus network? That's funny. Krishan Rock, Amber Rose, Brandy's little brother. He always be tripping. Ray J. All right. It's always so funny. Whenever we do question of the day, it's always unanimous. Like you, you guys section out like two or three people and you literally just repeat those two or three people. It's hilarious. Anybody have anybody new? Comment below or send me an email. Turn out loud at CFQR600.com. All right. This brings us to sports news. Tuesday night. Clay Thompson made his return to Oracle Arena playing the Golden State Warriors, my team, my selection for the finals. By the way, I want to say this early before they start winning and the people say I'm jumping on the bandwagon, but it was an amazing return. Apparently, all the people, all the staff uh, was there to greet him. Three, four hundred people. I saw all the clips online. It was really amazing. But more importantly, the game was amazing. I missed it. I'm so mad. Um, Steph Curry scored. 12 of the last uh, of the last warrior points and hit a dagger to win apparently it was some, an amazing game love to see it but yeah i wanted to highlight clay thompson's return always love clay uh but really really just to put it out there that the golden state warriors are on fire my guy steph curry my guy for conversation as uh, as one of the goats you know jordan we have to put LeBron in there, Kobe and Steph Curry, man. He should be up there in a conversation. We'll see how he ends off his career. Um, anyways, that is it for my Friday show. I'm running low on time. Thank you so much for kicking it with me. Make sure you tune in Friday for our, you know, pre weekend celebration. All right. Um, before I let you go, I just want to remind you guys of all the ways to stay up with the Turnout Loud podcast. If you're used to watching this podcast on YouTube or podcast platforms, please Try to check me out Monday through Friday from 11 to 12 on CFQR600.com or 600 AM if you're in the Montreal area. We do play the Turn Out Loud podcast, but we mix it in with 90s and 2000s hip-hop and R&B. It's a great hour. It's a great way for you to get your entertainment and viral news while listening to your favorite hits from the 90s and 2000s. And I select the music, so you know it's going to be dope. Vice versa, for those of you who are used to listening to this show on CFUR 600, and you cannot always catch the show from 11 to 12. You're busy. We get it. Let me tell you three ways to keep up with the show. One, on the CFUR 600 website, when you click listen live, there is a tab that will pop up that says listen again. Click right there. You'll see the Turn Out Loud podcast, and you could watch or listen to all 375 episodes so you never have to miss out. There's obviously YouTube, which you already all know, and any podcast platform. Just go to your desired site, type in Trent Out Loud. The show will pop up. Don't forget to hit the follow and subscribe button so that you can be notified every time we upload a new show and we upload daily because we, we we are working hard for y'all. Uh, you can follow me on any social platform. It's always the same handle, Trent Out Loud. Don't forget to follow the media company, Exclusivity Media on Instagram. And lastly, for those of you who are tuning in on CFQR, do not touch your dial because Don Smooth is coming up with the lunch mix from 11 to 12. And Don is always dropping the hits. I'll see y'all tomorrow. We're close to the weekend, y'all. Peace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, turn out loud. Peace.